Are you supposed to say it? I don't know. And God is good because he's never going to let us go, right? He's with us during those ugly times, and he's with us during those joyful times. He never goes anywhere. He's never afraid. He's never sleeping. He's never scared. So that is what makes God so good. And welcome to you out there. Go ahead and write down where you're watching from. We'll acknowledge that you're watching and hope that um, as we worship, you feel the presence of God. So let's go ahead and start with an opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, you enable us to turn to you, confident that all our cries and prayers will be heard by you and answered by you. We offer our prayers in that same belief and with even greater confidence, for in Jesus you have made known your great love for all people. Amen. All right, let's stand and sing. seats, Adriana. Yes. Me and Mrs. Walt tried them. They do hold our weight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, because you know what these are? They're like papa -san chairs. They're round chairs and they got bungee cords. And so you sit on them and you can bounce. No, yes, this is what we do. No, you can't bounce. Well, oh no, you can't bounce. <laughs> we bounce. Anyway. So we have that. So we've been painting and I'm a messy painter. How many are messy painters? How many are really clean painters? Okay, so you're clean painters. This is my daughter's brush that I found in her room. So, thank you. Um, so, is this the kind of brush you'd use to start a new project? No. Our project? Why? Because it's dirty. Because it's dirty. It is, isn't it? And it's hard. Hard? It's raw. <laughs> right. And so, this would be hard to get, you know, like you could dip it in another color. What color is this? Green. It's green, right? You can dip it in another color, but what colors are you going to get? You're going to get, let's say you dip it in pink. What other color are you going to get? Green. green, right? And you might even get some chunks of what? Green. Paper towel. <laughs> might get some chunks of paper towel. So um, this would not be a brush you'd probably use to paint, would you? you got to wash it. Oh, don't move ahead. So, I know, she's so smart, she already knows. So this brush, with all this nasty paint on it, and it's hard as a rock. I mean, it is hard. Um, 
reminds me of sin. Do you know what sin is? Yeah. What's sin? Something that's bad, right? That you know is bad. Yeah. You yell at your parents. You smack your sister. You choke your sister. Yeah, don't choke your sister. You smack your brother. You smack Devon. Dev Devon. How do I say your name? Devon. Do you smack him? Don't, because he's gonna get big one day. I used to I used to hit my brother when he was little. I used to punch him in the arm. Yeah. I know. But guess what? Lynn? Guess what? He's six foot six foot two now. And like, so one day I hit him and he hit me back and it hurt. <laughs> so I stopped hitting my brother. Anyway, because he's younger than me. So this brush reminds me of sin. Sometimes when we do things that are really bad and we keep doing them, even though we know they're bad, do you ever keep doing something that you know is bad? It can build up like it does on this brush. It can be like this paint build up on the brush. Pretty soon your heart gets really hard. It gets kind of hard. And when you try to add a new color to the brush, we already know we're going to get two colors. So when you try to do something good and replace the stuff that you've been doing that is bad, sometimes you can't even feel the goodness anymore. But just like this paintbrush, it can be cleaned. Just like you said, Liv, right? It can be cleaned. It can be cleaned. And so with solvent or water, depending on what kind of paint this is, and a lot of work, a lot of work, cleaning and cleaning those bristles off, it can eventually be cleaned. So when we sin, when we do something bad, and we feel really bad in our hearts, kind of like this hard brush, oh my gosh, things are coming off. Um, who do we pray to? Yeah, because what did Jesus do on the cross? He forgave our sins, didn't he? So, but that doesn't mean we keep doing it. We don't say, oh, Jesus, yes, I just choked my sister, and then tomorrow I'll do the same thing, right? Now, Jesus is not going to be happy about that. I don't know why we're choking each other. Anyway, let me use a different example. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> my daughters, when they were younger, when the older one used to choke the younger one all the time. And you know what I would say to the younger one? What did you do? Because <laughs> she would always provoke her sister to that point, which was the nice. So I'd say, you know, you can't, you can't choke each other. But hit each other, smack each other, irritate them in their, you know, come into their room. And they won't do it again? Yeah, yeah. He just does it. Yeah, yeah. So siblings can be a pain. Sometimes friends, we can be mean to our friends by accident, or we can be mean to our friends on purpose. Or friends can be mean to us, can't they? Yeah. And that's not very nice, is it? But remember that the more you do this, the more you do things that are not nice and you know they're not nice and you keep doing them over and over and over, your heart can get harder. And I'm talking to the big people too. And But yet we can clean this brush and Jesus can always clean our hearts if we ask for forgiveness, right? Now we don't have to beat ourselves up. We just try better next time. And sometimes we slip up, but we at least try, right? Yeah. So um, anybody want to use this for their next art project? No. Okay. You're not interested? All right, let's pray that uh, um, and thank Jesus for forgiving our sins. Lord, we thank you for these kids and we thank you that you did die on the cross to forgive us of our sins and you know, we know things that are wrong, but sometimes we still mess up, but you're there to catch us. When we ask for forgiveness, you give it freely and lovingly. So help us to learn to forgive others as well. In the name of Christ, amen. All right, you guys can head on down to the garden through sixth grade. Bye. See ya. You guys going down? Bye, boys. You can take your pen and paper with you. Go ahead. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yes, there is. Uh, I know. Yes, there is. Yeah. So there's a disco ball and dancing downstairs in Sunday school. Wasn't that nice? Okay. All right. So we are going to um, start with some scripture. Second Peter 3.13. It's one verse. Pretty short. It's the Apostle Peter who writes in his second letter. But in keeping with his promise, talking about God. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I want to ask you a question. Have you ever felt like you were stuck in the middle of something? Yeah. Or in that in-between stage? 
Yeah. I mean, maybe you've been stuck in the middle between two friends that are fighting. Have you ever been there? That is not a fun place to be. They're both really good friends, and you're stuck in the middle, and you just think, please just apologize to each other so we can move on, right? It's not a pleasant place to be stuck in the middle. Or maybe maybe it's a joyful time that you're stuck in the middle, but you're full of uncertainty. You're a brand new couple, and you're going to have a baby in about three months, and you start wondering, is our relationship going to be the same? Is it going to be just as good when it was the two of us than when it will be the three of us? And so there's a little bit of uncertainty there, maybe a little bit of anxiety. Or maybe it's a bad time and you're stuck in the middle. Have you ever had some friends that you had at high school and then you lose those friends because you just grow apart from each other? And you're stuck in the middle because you don't know if you're going to make new friends and you're kind of anxious and you're kind of scared and you're kind of afraid. So being stuck in the middle, we know, can sometimes bring us to those places of anxiety. Sometimes it can bring us to places of fear. Sometimes it can bring us to places of frustration. Amen? Yes. Being stuck in the middle is not always a good thing. But we know God uses it when we're stuck in the middle. When we're in between, he'll use that in a positive way. He'll help us grow in maturity. And he'll help us grow spiritually. Now... I'm going to put a slide up on the screen. Ben's got it there for me. I don't know if you can see it, but you could, it kind of goes along with your insert. Okay. Randy Elkhorn, who is um, Reverend Randy Elkhorn, who we've been following on my sermon series on heaven, he describes three phases of earth and humankind on this slideshow. We're stuck in the middle right now. We're stuck in the middle between the way God intended us to live in Eden, where there was human beings, lived with God, there were trees, there were animals, it was all good, right? It was all very good, as God said. And the future new earth, or future heaven, when I say new earth, I mean future heaven as well, they both are synonymous, where God will redeem the earth, and heaven will come down, and we will live with God in all of eternity, where there will be no suffering and tears and all of that. But in the meantime, we're stuck in the middle, aren't we? We're stuck in the middle of this place between the way God intended human beings to live, his creation, and the way we will live in the future. And right now, we're stuck in a sin-infested earth, aren't we? If you don't know that, look around, turn on the TV. There's suffering, there's riots, there's shootings, there's um, murders, there's accidents, there's disease, there's illness. And this is, this is where we are. We're stuck in the middle. And it can be a time of uncertainty, right? It can be a time of fear. Or it can be a time where we look forward to the new earth and we think about and we see some of the glimpses of heaven right here where we live now. So we're going to talk about, as we continue on our sermon series, Heaven with Randy Elkhorn. We're using his theological work because, heck, he's already done it. So if you want to get Randy Elkhorn's book, Heaven, it's a good book. It is not an easy read. It is definitely filled with lots of um, Bible references, lots of theology. Um, yeah. It's not one of those where you're going to read, hey, I went and visited heaven and this is what happened. It's not a story. It is all biblical support for heaven. And again, the reason I wanted to do a sermon series on heaven was I kept getting questions about heaven. And I didn't have really good answers. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do a sermon series on heaven. And it is, it is quite difficult. Now I know why a lot of pastors don't do a lot of uh, digging on heaven because it's hard. It's hard work. But we're going to do it anyway. So we're going to focus now on the new earth. Remember the last couple of weeks um, we talked about the present heaven or the intermediate heaven or the place where all our loved ones are right now. And we know that there's people and we know that there's tree, the tree of life and we know that... They recognize one another, and that's great. That is a layover. Like I explained, we were going on a trip, and we had a layover on our planes, and there was still family there, but we were heading to our final destination. Our final destination is the new earth, because like Jesus told John when he visited heaven, the present heaven will come down to earth. God will come down to us. God with us means exactly that. Not just a nice little thing you can put on your bumper sticker. It literally means that one day God will live and dwell with us. He'll bring the city of Jerusalem down with the Garden of Eden attached, right? Because the Garden of Eden didn't go anywhere. And he will come down to the new earth. But it'll be a redeemed earth. It'll be a renovated earth. It'll be a new earth or future heaven. So that's what we're going to talk about. 
But in the meantime, folks, we're stuck in between. We're stuck in the middle. So what can we do? Well, we can focus on a couple things while we live here. And that doesn't mean we focus on the news. And that doesn't mean we focus on the riots. And that doesn't mean we focus on the murders. This is what we can focus on. First and foremost is that the earth, the way it is right now, is not our true home. That's number one. This is not our true home. Now, we were created from earth. Remember, it says that God created mankind. He picked up some dirt, right? And he did what? He breathed life into this dirt and became a human being. Okay, so we were created from the earth, okay? And it says every time we do good, uh, Ash Wednesday, we are dirt and to dirt we shall return. Or ash, same thing, you know? We're from the ground and we will return to the ground. But when Jesus returns, we will live on the new earth. So right now, earth, the way it is, is not our home. We're looking forward to our final destination, which is the new earth. But this... And, and we're longing for, we're longing for the way it was in the Garden of Eden, where we lived with God, we talked with God, we ate dinner with God, we grabbed a fruit off of many of the trees with God, there was a river, you know, there was all kinds of things going on in the present heaven, and we were with God, but then we know the story. But the longing for Eden has not gone away in the heart of every human being. Listen to Hebrews 13, 14. For this world is not our present home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Because we're looking forward to a home yet to come, the place where we lived with God together and it was good and there was no suffering, we can see sin and we can name it and we can claim it. We know mass shootings are wrong, right? We know that. We know that killing babies is wrong, right? We know that. We see that. We know that because we have a yearning for the way it used to be, where there was life and there was God and there was good things and there was no evil. We know that evil is wrong and we can see it, right? And sometimes it's sneaky. Sometimes evil's very sneaky. And I think the division in our country right now is a very evil thing because I think that Satan is loving every minute of it, every single minute of it. The more he can divide the more he can conquer, right? And so when we see evil, when we see bad things, we recognize them, we know they're bad because each human being has a piece of the Garden of Eden in us, the goodness of God in us. And that's the way it was supposed to be. So when we see it, we can focus on the fact that this is not our home. We're stuck in the middle because of the consequence of sin. This is not our home. And no matter how much Satan wants to tempt us, do you know another way Satan likes to tempt us? He says, you know what? This is all there is, folks. This is as good as a gift. So you might as well eat, drink, and marry, and the heck with the rest of it. Go out and eat, go out and drink, go out and do whatever you want. Spend your money on whatever you want because this is all you're going to get. But that's a lie. There's something much better, and that is the new earth, this future heaven that we will all live on together in eternity. So don't listen to Satan. So focus on the fact that this is not our home. The second thing we can do while we're stuck in this place in the middle, living on this sin-infested earth, is to look around at the clues that God gives us to the new earth. Um, God said he's going to bring down the new heavens and the new earth. If he was going to create something totally different, he wouldn't have called it the new earth, would he have? So the new earth means the old earth that we live on right now but redeemed, resurrected, renovated, brand new when Christ comes back again. So we can look at some of the clues that God has for us right here on this old earth right now. For example, there's going to be cities in the new earth or the future heaven. There'll be cities. Hebrews 11.10 says that Abraham, remember Abraham is in the present heaven, and James and John and all of those guys and Moses and Elijah, right? Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations and a city designed and built by God. So if we want clues to what the new heaven is going to look like, this new earth, what it's going to look like when it's renovated, we look at our cities and you think, what in the world are you talking about? Have you seen cities right now? Have you seen Chicago? Have you seen the murders, Pastor? What are you talking about? Well, let's look at the positive things about a city. What are the positive things about a city? 
Number one, a city has people gathering, doesn't it? There's people in a city, and they're gathering. They're gathering around buildings. They're gathering around art. They're gathering around culture. They're gathering around music, right? City meets there's people. They're gathered together. They're, they're enjoying the symphony. They're going to the movies. Look at the positive things of a city. Not the negative. Look at the positive things of a city. Maybe, maybe the cities in heaven are going to be much better than that. But there'll be, there'll be buildings, and there'll be art, and there'll be popcorn, and there'll be movies to see, and there'll be movies that you've never seen, never even thought of seeing. If we look at our present day right now, and we look at the positive things about the cities, people engaging in conversation, people having a chat at a coffee shop, people doing positive activities together. Take the good of our cities and you will see a clue as to what the new earth, our future heaven, is going to look like. Second, the Bible tells us there's going to be countries in the new earth, or the future heaven. There's going to be countries. Hebrews 11:16 says, Obviously people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. Talking about the saints. A country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they would have gone back. So the saints... The martyrs that are up in heaven right now are looking for a country they can call their own. So there's countries in heaven. So what do we know about countries today? Number one, we know that countries are um, run by honest people, right? Some countries are run by evil dictators, right? Hey, I love these babies. You bring me a baby. We're talking for it. Some countries have honest people that are running it. Some countries have evil dictators running it, right? Right? But what do we know about countries? What do we know about the good things about countries? The good things about countries is there's patriotism, right? The people have pride, national pride in their country. I mean, if you're from Scotland, you have national pride in your country. I don't know about you, but I have pride in America. I love being from the United States of America. Amen? I love it. I am very, I am, I'm a wonderful person that loves, well, I'm not a wonderful person all the time, but I love my country. I don't want to live anywhere else. I'd like to visit other countries, but I don't want to live there. People from Scotland love their country, so there's patriotism. There's pride. There's diverse people living in a country that are unified because they love that country. So now imagine on the new earth, countries that are run by believers in Jesus Christ. Do you imagine if China was run by a believer in Jesus Christ? There would be no more pollution. There would be no more genocide in some of these places. If they were all run, countries all run by believers in Jesus Christ, it would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Yes. So there will be countries in the future heaven on the new earth. And all the good things about countries. And one more question for you. On our earth right now, can you imagine not having rivers or mountains or trees or grass or animals? Right, you can't imagine. That's what earth is, right? Earth is made up of all those things, all those earthly things. So if you can't imagine the earth the way it is now without mountain range and, and rolling, tree, you know, rolling meadows and beautiful wildflowers and, and our dogs and our cats and, you know, all of the animals. And why would we think the new earth isn't going to be filled with those things? Why would we think that God's going to get rid of all that on the new earth? He isn't. There will be rivers. There will be streams. There will be all of those wonderful things. In fact, these earthly features are mentioned in Revelations 21 and 22. Yes. So read for information. Revelation 21, 22. They talk about it. So earthly things will be on the new earth like atmosphere. We're not going to be floating around. There's going to be gravity. There's going to be water. There's going to be trees. There's going to be people and houses and your dog. Yes, there will be. So you might be asking, how in the world is God going to renew this earth? Because it is sin infested, isn't it? How is he going to renew this? Because I can tell you what. I don't want to live on this earth for all eternity. Do you? No way. 
So how is he going to renovate this new earth? Well, he's going to send a redeemer. Did you know that God promised a redeemer twice in the Bible? Not just once, but twice. Twice he promised a redeemer. And who is our redeemer? Jesus Christ. Back in Genesis, listen to what God says to the serpent after he, te after he fools Adam and Eve. He says to the serpent in Genesis 3, Then the Lord God said to the serpent, And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He, the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, will strike your head, the head of the serpent, and the serpent will strike Jesus' heel. Can I live if you, if you uh, cut my heel? Can I live if you take a club and beat my head? Probably not. That's right. So Jesus is the Redeemer. And where, when did all this happen? When did all this striking happen? At the cross. That was Satan striking the Redeemer in the heel. Every time he got whipped, every time he got scourged, every time he got laughed at, every time he wore a crown of thorns on his head. Every time, Satan was striking his heel. But Jesus turned and he struck Satan's head, didn't he? Because when he was raised from the dead, he eliminated death, didn't he? And sin. I mean, yeah, we still sin, and yes, there's still sin in this world, but the Redeemer has come. And guess what? The Redeemer will come again. In Revelation, listen to this, 21 through 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss. And a great chain in his hand. I know this is some scary stuff. And he <laughs> laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him there for a thousand years. We talk about this angel. Angels were created by God, right? Would you agree? They're creatures? Yep, they were created by God. So guess what? They do what God says. And God says, I need you to go down to earth, and I need you to wrap up Satan and all his little minions, and I need you to bind him for a thousand years. And that's not it. This is the promise of the Redeemer who will come back. Then it says in verse 10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. There will be a time when the Redeemer will come again. And he will resurrect the dead. And we will have glorified bodies. This is the conclusion to the plan that God started in the beginning. Before the foundations of the earth. Before Adam and Eve sinned. He had a plan to send a redeemer. Jesus Christ to earth. And he's going to call that redeemer back again. And Jesus will return again. And he will take care of this evil. And he will eliminate it. And he will redeem the new earth. And we will live there forever and ever as believers in Jesus Christ. And we will rule and reign, which is what we're going to talk about next week. Because nations need rulers, don't they? Countries need rulers. Countries need people to rule them and reign. And that's what John tells us. So know that the new earth is a wonderful place. And it's just like this earth, but without the sin, without the brokenness, without the random accidents, without the shootings at colleges, without the knifings and the stabbings and all these other hideous things that go on in our world. <clears throat> We're in between, but we don't live here. Amen? We don't live here. Something better's coming. And I pray it comes soon. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the Apostle Peter who tells us that we can keep looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth because God keeps his promises, doesn't he? He keeps his promise. Yeah, he does. Amen. We'll go back to mom. Yeah, do you want to go back to mom? Thank you for letting me borrow the baby. Next week, it's okay. It's Miles. I told you. They're hard competition, so I got to hold the baby, so you keep your eyes on me. Especially when I'm in this kind of woo stuff. So that's about the new earth. Next week, we'll talk about how believers in Christ will be ruling and reigning in these countries. Okay? So we're talking about heaven because I want to give some concrete answers. So when people say... You know, I'm so sick of this world. I'm so, you know, even someone that you know that just wants to get out of this world. You know, suicide is, you know, huge. All you can tell them is, you know what? This is your practice test. This is your in-between time. This is the time where you're going to grow spiritually. And you're going to use these gifts that you have 
in the new heaven, the new earth. You're going to use those. God's not going to eliminate your gifts. Except for evangelism. I don't know what he's going to do with us preachers. Because they're going to be, you guys are already going to be up there, believers. We don't need to tell you about God. He's going to be right there. What will we do? Maybe we'll take a break. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, that's exciting stuff, isn't it? There's good things. Good things waiting for us. But in the middle, we're stuck in between right now. But this is not our home. Okay, so now we are going to do some prayers of joys and concerns. So I've got somebody writing those down. Remember online to write out your prayers. We'll make sure we check those and we send them out to our email database. So what do we need to pray about? Connie. The players that are There's a wildfire somewhere, right? Does anybody know exactly where it is? Because I don't know where this is on her hand. It's over in Talos. Okay, thank you. So yes, for the wildfires. Jamie? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. For all our babies. For all our babies. Yeah, hearing all those babies is wonderful stuff. Yes? For my nephew David, Michael, and Ron. They all have big health problems. David, Michael, and Rob. Especially David is trying to... Uh, Getting on the kidney list, right? So we want to pray hard for a kidney for David. Yeah, thank you. Pray for the family of Haley Stangler, um, 21 year old who was killed in an accident. She was a student at Kingsley um, High School. She was friends with Joel and many other friends. So we want to pray for her family, for Melissa, her mom, and Joe, her dad. And I believe they'll be gathering sometime this week. So watch the papers for her. Um, Memorial service is terrible, terrible stuff. So we want to pray for that family, the Stangler family. Anything else? Leona? Yeah, my sister Vera Riley passed away. Oh. And I'm sorry, Leona. For the family of Vera Riley. I'm very sorry. She was 103. She almost oh. 103. Wow, good for her. <laughs> yeah. It's a joy, but Hannah Banana's birthday is tomorrow. Hannah's Banana's birthday is tomorrow. How old is she? Six. Six. Okay. And Davon was 13. Devon. Devon. Why don't I want it? Because it's spelled weird. Devon. Devon. Devon, Devon, Devon. 13. He's 13. Can you tell him? He says, oh my gosh. The teenager. Yes, you made it. Good for you. Anything else? Yeah, Jan. Shirley Clark is hospitalized with COVID. Shirley Clark with COVID in the hospital. Yes. <clears throat> Others? Yeah, Denise. Very nice. She got the shingles and didn't feel like she could come today. Okay, so for Vera, who doesn't feel well from these shingles. Anything else? The evil family. Family, uh, that's right, for Paul Ebel family. And for the entire Eagle family, because you know they lost both of those brothers to COVID. Yes. Unspoken, thank you. Anything else? All right. Let's pray. Lord, we do pray to you because we know you hear our prayers. That's what Jesus did. He opened up the possibility to come into presence and what a holy place that is and we just thank you that you hear our prayers those that are unspoken in our hearts we can't lift up those that are broken hearted those that just don't know how to pray don't you hear our desires and our needs and you meet us there we thank you lord we do pray for those who have lost loved ones to covid there are many we just ask that you lift up their families. For those that are fighting it, Lord, in the hospital, we ask for healing hands on them. We do pray for the family of Vera Riley and the family of Haley Stangler as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. Hey, 21. Such a tragedy. And Vera, who made it to 103. You know, there's no rhyme or reason, Lord, because we are in a sin-infested world. And we live in this in-between time, trying to cope, trying to grope along. And when we grope along, we see the light.
light, and only you can provide that light. So I pray for each person that has lost loved ones, that they know you, Lord, and hang on to you. And even when they can't hold on anymore, we know that you're holding them tightly. We pray for those that... We just pray for those that don't know what to do, that are lost. We just pray that the church will be the church. And spread the love of Christ first. Get to know people. Instead of criticizing them because they got COVID because they didn't wear a mask. Oh, stop it. I'm so, hearing that from a Christian just makes me cringe. Got COVID because they got COVID. They died because they got COVID. And it attacked their body differently than it did another person. Again, no rhyme or reason. But very evil. And so, Lord, we know that you have, you have evil under your control, and one day you will throw all of evil into the lake of fire. But until then, Lord, we do what the church is supposed to do, is to be the light and to love the families and to come alongside them and hold on to them and cry with them and not accuse them and judge them. And, Lord, we thank you for babies. What joyful voices they are. And I got to hold a baby while I preached. What a wonderful thing. That's got to be about as close to heaven as you can get. So we just thank you for babies. And we thank you for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, now would be the time that we would go ahead and take our offerings. So you can go ahead and put them in the back there. And if you'd like to uh, donate to the Kingsley United Methodist Church, you can write a check to P.O. Box 395, Kingsley, Michigan. Or this is the website, which Ben will put up, and you can click on it and pay by PayPal. So join me as we pray for our offering together. <clears throat> Jesus, you bear our burdens in times of trouble, and through your sacrificial love, our lives are blessed, strengthened, and empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you bless these gifts we offer today, and may they bring you praise, adoration, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's stand and sing our closing songs. <laughs>
did pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> a little louder would have been better, but whatever. Arcade games. So if you know any seventh or twelfth graders, have a meet here at noon. It's a free event, 
and they can come along. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for reminding us that this is not our home, that we're stuck in between, but even here we can still see glimpses of what you have in store for us to restore all of creation. Not just human beings, but all of creation. That means animals and birds and all of those things and cities and countries and all of that. And we will have plenty to do on the new earth, the future heaven. But until then, Lord, help us to remember that this is not our home and to share your love and what you have in store for us with others. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.